Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Mrs. Stannis here presenting to you Saxon Lesson 14, which is another lesson about the number line, but this time focusing on negative numbers. So make sure you have your notes and a pencil in front of you because we are about to begin. So up top, you can see that we have another number line. This should look familiar from our last number line lesson. And a number line is a way to show numbers in order or to arrange numbers in order. Now, right in the very middle of the number line, you should see the zero there. And let's look at the right of the number line. All of these numbers, one, two, three, four, five, and so on, to the right of the number line, what do you think we can call those numbers? Write it down in this box right here. I'm going to cut the box out of the way here to show that those numbers are called positive numbers. They have a value greater than zero. So now let's go to the other side of zero, to the left of zero on the number line. What do you think these numbers are called? Hopefully, you didn't have much trouble coming up with negative numbers. All of those numbers with a value less than zero. And then of course, zero is right in the middle. So it is neither positive or negative. We call it neutral. So zero is neutral. It doesn't have a positive value or a negative value. Okay, can you think of any ways that these numbers over here, the negative numbers, are used in the real world because we haven't seen them much in math um, up in you know before sixth grade. So can you think of any ways negative numbers are used outside of math class in the real world? I want you to think about that now and jot anything down in your notes that you can think of. And I'm going to check them tomorrow and we'll talk about them. I think maybe I'll add one or two down here though, but I want you to try to come up with your own. So one thing you might come up with is money. So if you owe somebody money, um, if you're in debt, you would have a negative number in front of your um, dollar sign, or you'd have a negative sign in front of your dollar sign. Another way might be temperature. So if it's very cold, we could have temperatures below zero. Another way might be your altitude. So if you are above sea level or below sea level, Sea level. So if you're below sea level, you would have a negative altitude. Um, why don't you think of a few more ways, if, if there's any that you can come up with. And like I said, we'll talk about them in class. Okay, so example one wants us to arrange these numbers in order from least to greatest. So we have zero, one, and negative two. So first and foremost, remember that zero is neutral doesn't have a positive or a negative value. So I'm actually going to be able to move these around with my uh, smart pen here. I know you can't do that in your notes, but you're just going to have to rewrite it now. So zero is going to go in the middle. Now one is a positive number, which we saw just a minute ago, goes on the right side of zero on the number line. And negative two, of course, is a negative number, which goes to the left side of zero on the number line. So let's just add in some commas. So we don't think it says negative 201, which happens to be our area code, which is kind of cool. Negative 2, comma, 0, comma, 1. Okay, so that would be the answer from least to greatest. So you'll have to write that on your own. Obviously, you can't move the numbers on your paper. All right, example 2 asks us to compare negative 3 and negative 4. Now remember, when you compare two numbers, you are telling if they are equal. And if they're not equal, you have to say which is greater. So let's go back to that number line in the beginning of the lesson. We are comparing negative 2 and negative 3. So hold on, I just want to double check that. No, negative 3 and negative 4, sorry. We're comparing negative 3 and negative 4. So you're going to notice that here's 0. Negative 3 is closer to 0 on the number line than negative 4. So negative 3 actually has a value that is greater than negative 4. Okay, so let's go back and fill that in. Negative 3 is greater than negative 4. And I don't know if you remember me talking about the when you were little how we talked about an alligator or Pac-Man or Cookie Monster. Um, and I always think of Cookie Monster with this greater than sign that wants to eat the greater amount of cookies. Well, how does that work with, with negative numbers, you might ask? Well, think of it this way. The negative means that Cookie Monster owes somebody else a cookie or has to give a cookie away. So between having to give away three cookies or having to give away four cookies, what would Cookie Monster choose? 
Well, he is pretty greedy. He loves his cookies. So he would choose to give away three instead of four cookies. So if you can kind of think of it that way, or how much money would you rather give away? $3 or $4? Okay, so $3 is the greater, negative three is the greater number here. It is closer to zero because as we go to the right on the number line, the numbers increase in value. Okay, so moving on. It says here, now we have the same number line again. It says, notice that the points on the number line marked five, so I'm gonna just mark them off with a dot, five and negative five are the same distance from zero, but they're on opposite sides of zero. So let's just double check that. So if I start at zero and count this way, we have one, two, three, four, five spaces, obviously, to get to five. And if I start at zero and go in the other direction, one, two, three, four, five spaces, to get to negative five. So they're the same distance, but on opposite sides of zero. Therefore, we say that five and negative five are opposites. So that should make sense, being that they're on opposite sides of zero. Can you name a few more pairs of opposites? So I'd like you to try in your notes right now to name at least one more pair of opposites. I'm going to say 25 and negative 25. Come up with an, another pair or two, okay, in your notes of opposites. Now underneath that, it says that the tick marks on the number line show the location of numbers called integers. So not integers, but integers is how you say that. Integers include all of the counting numbers and their opposites, as well as the number zero. So counting numbers are, you know, zero, one, two, three, four, five. Numbers I said um, that I told you the other day are numbers that my daughter Kylie is currently learning. Now their opposites are all those negatives, negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five, etc. All of those numbers are integers. So that's a word that you should become familiar with. Okay, now let's talk about subtraction here with regards to negative numbers. If you subtract a larger number from a smaller number, for example, two minus three, so you're taking away more than you have, your answer will be a negative number. One way to find the answer to such questions is to use the number line. So think about two minus three again. If we start at two and we count back three because we're subtracting, so we're going to the left. One, two, three, you arrive at negative one. So two minus three equals negative one. That is correct because we should have a negative answer. We are taking away more than we had to begin with. Can you think of a faster way to find the answer? So think about it right now. Is there kind of a trick to that that you can use every time? Um, there absolutely is. So if you think of two minus three being negative one, the way we can get that without using a number line is to flip the order of the two and the three and think of it as, as a regular subtraction problem. Three minus two is one. And then all you have to do is put a negative sign in front of the answer, negative one. It works every time. Okay, so let's try example three. Subtract five from two. So two is my menu end here. I'm subtracting five from it. Two minus five is the problem, not five minus two, okay? So we're subtracting five from two. So two minus five. Now, I'm gonna just draw a quick number line for those visual learners. And you can see how we are going to subtract five from two. Okay, so here's two, my beginning spot where it said, Okay, now I'm going to go five back from there. One, two, three, four, five. And I end up here. So let's label them. I didn't finish labeling everything. So this is one, zero, negative one, negative two, negative three. So negative three is the answer. Now, if we're using the trick we just talked about, let's try that down here. And we flip flop the five and the two. Five minus two is three. And then all you have to do is put that negative sign in front of it. And that's how we come up with negative three using kind of the shortcut method. All right, example four. It says arrange these four numbers in order from least to greatest. Once again, I think I have the fancy numbers that I can move around. Um, yep, but you do not, of course. So you just have to rewrite this in your notes. So I'm going to 
start with our zero here, which is always kind of the anchor because it goes in the middle. From there, I know that all of the positive numbers are to the right. So there's only one positive number, the number one. Okay, now I have negative two and negative one to place. Now remember, negative one is the opposite of one. So it goes this, in the same place, just on the other side of zero. So if one is right next to zero to the right of it, negative one is right next to zero, but to the left. And then negative two would go all the way on the very left. It is the smallest number, least to greatest. Okay, so this negative two is the smallest number here. One is the greatest number. We're going to go in and fill in commas so it doesn't look like some weird random number. And that is our answer. Negative two, negative one, zero, and one. Okay, I believe this is our last example. What number is seven less than three? Okay, so again, three is our menu end. And we're going seven less than that. So we're subtracting seven. Okay, using our shortcut trick, if I do seven minus three and flip these numbers, I get four. So my answer to this problem is the opposite of that. It's negative four. And you could always draw a number line and count backwards. Start at three. I'm just gonna do that quickly here. Start at three and go seven. Whoa, it was a big jump. Go seven backwards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And you can count where you are. And you do end up at negative four. Two, one, zero, negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four. Okay, so there's always that number line for the visual learners here. And then you could always use this other trick as well. It works every time. So we have made it through the lesson and to the practice set. Please try all of these um, six problems in your practice set in your notes, and we will check them tomorrow. Any questions, and we will talk about it tomorrow. So try your best, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.